Hello and welcome to another episode from CBD Genie. My name is Matt. And I'm Jonathan. And today we have an interview with Matt at Chloris. Yeah, Chloris, a uh, very exciting brand. Lots of new products coming into the market. So it was great to catch up with them and see uh, where they're going. Absolutely. So stay tuned and here we go. Right, okay, so uh, here we are. We're talking to uh, Matt from Chloris. Uh, Matt, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. Very good. How are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. So let's dive straight in then. Um, do you want to sort of give us a bit of background as to, you know, why and how you started your brand? Uh, so Chloris, we started um, about four years ago, um, and it really... It originated from personal experience, um, sort of personal need for both um, me and my co-founders and our, our family um, in particular. So it, it came from a, an initial um, discussion between us. So I, I've, I've known my, my co-founders for, for many, many years um, through various other um, industries. And, and we, we were sort of chatting about health and wellness um, and um this was when sort of CBD was only just really starting to be talked about in, in the sort of the, not even the mainstream at that point. Um, and my, my co-founders have been, been um, using it for some time to help with, a, with, with various conditions for them and, and their family. And it's just, I, I, I tried it for both myself and, and actually my, my father. And um, the results we saw were amazing, but this, we couldn't find the a consistent quality. Um, sort of, we couldn't find proper science driven formulations. And so we set about, creating Chloris to really deliver that and do so in a, in a sustainable manner. Right. So had you, how was it the case that you had been buying CBD products elsewhere and just finding that they weren't, weren't hitting the mark for you? We found it very, very difficult to get um, a consistent quality product, but also to, to find suppliers and brands that were being completely transparent about the products and the contents and, and that kind of thing it was was very much a, a sort of wild west at the time it was yeah. was quite a um, i guess unprofessional space in terms of it wasn't being treated like a you know a proper professional product yeah. Yeah. at the time I, I love that thing because a lot of people do refer to it as a, as a, as a sort of wild west yeah. and it was very much like that thing isn't it you know you, you've got no idea actually what was in the bottle and, and, and it could vary from one batch to the next and nobody seemed to put any quality control on anything. Exactly, yeah. It seemed like it was an area that was, was right. You know, it, it could. we knew it had enormous potential to, to do good, but in order to do that, it needed to be... Um, you know, professionalized and brought up to yeah. up to the standards that you would expect from any type of sort of quality um, wellness product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can I can I ask it without prying and asking you to sort of be overly specific, but uh, a, a common thread talking to people that have actually started their own companies within the CBD market is a family member having an ailment. It seems to be very common that there is a very personal seed to why a brand has originally emerged. What Was there a specific ailment that you're happy to let us know was the drive for your CBD journey? I mean, so interestingly for all three of us as, as founders, so, so Kim and Pedro are my, my co-founders in this, we all had different routes to that, but but with the same the same thing. So different conditions, but then drove this. And the, the real thing that drove it for me was actually giving um, one of our first products we developed was a, a, a balm. I mean, my, my father has a, a rare neurological condition that has left him in debilitating pain for, for years. And he was very um, anti-opiates and, and you know, he yeah. didn't want to be taking the strong painkillers that they, they were trying to prescribe him all the time. So he was really quite debilitated by this. And, and we gave him the balm to try. And he literally called me back two days later and was like, this, this has changed my life. What? what is this? How can I get more of it? Um, and he's still, he's a daily user of most of our products to this day. And actually, I mean, I, I, for his condition at the time, this was sort of four years ago, he was told he was going to be in a wheelchair um, within within a year. Um, now he's been told that actually, if he went to the specialist today, they, they'd class him as a borderline case. Um, and the only thing wow. he's been taking is, is CBD. Um, so obviously we can't make any any direct medical claims about this this is just that you know this is an anecdotal experience but it's a it was a really profound one for me it was like no but this the trigger, is the trigger then was pain management it was pain management but also um this has helped actually start to reverse some of the nerve damage with him so it's actually it's actually treating the root cause rather than just masking it which i think yeah. is a, a it's a really interesting thing that we're seeing with, with sort of um cbd and all those kind of related compounds is actually this isn't just a sticking plaster. It, I, it, I think I think that's interesting you say that because others have sort of commented that 
what CBD does with, with sort of extended use, it's sort of embed within the system. Um, and yeah. then it starts to sort of complement and work with our own natural system. So yes, the sort of preventative aspect to future ailments and problems is I think very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and, and obviously you said uh, you'd, you'd started with the, um, the bombs. I mean, can you give us an idea of, of how your product portfolio has evolved and, and what it looks like now? So we, we develop all of our products from, a, I guess, an efficacy standpoint. So it's what, what is the intent of this product? What do we want it to, to help with? And then how do we go about doing that in um, A, the most, most sort of natural way? So we, we lean very heavily on, on plant-based sort of sustainable ingredients um, to steer away from artificial um, ingredients unless there's a, there's a compelling reason for them to, to be in the product. Mm. Um, and then we get it, so ultimately it's all driven by need. It's sort of what do we want this product to do where is it going to serve a, a particular need and then how do we best deliver that that product for the end user and that's we've been sort of slow and methodical to then expand our range on on that basis because we like to test everything really thoroughly before we bring anything to market um we we do not just stick cbd in any old product just to, to sort of give it a um an edge so um it, it's been meth yeah methodical um additions to the range so we've gone now from the oral oil drops to to balms to we do quite a, a broad uh, skincare range now as well because we saw a, a big demand in that because of the, the the topical properties of cbd and now we do a lot in uh, patches and those kind of um, other areas as well and some of this has been forced innovation because obviously we can't bring out any new ingestible products mm -hmm. right now um so we, we've been forced into into sort of focusing on sort of topical and, and transdermal absorption Roots. That sort of it sort of neatly fits in with the, the original trigger for for being here in the first place, doesn't it? Sort of. Exactly, and and to be honest, in terms of ingestible products as well, I'm not a huge fan of sort of doing multiple variations on oil drops with with other various additives because arguably you you'd be better off just using a, a plain um, oil, and then if you want other things to go with that, then taking those individually rather than having five different types of oil drops for for various different. Um, requirements. I think it, it, there's a yeah, negligible um, benefit to doing it that way. Um, but we certainly found that like, the topical properties have been have been profound, and the, the sort of transdermal ones with things like the patches, they they prove to be a, a really efficient delivery route. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's certainly uh, heard that from uh, other sources as well. Uh, I mean, and in and in terms of you know, um, Claris and the brand, I know you've touched on it a little bit. What is it you think in terms of is your you know strong sort of differentiator or, or, or what really underpins that brand going forwards? I think our our goal with Chloris is to create a, a premium brand, something that people would be happy to sort of show off and have on have on their shelf, something they want to, to talk about, feel like proud of using. Um, we've purposely get the brand. It, it, it's really far away from the sort of cannabis style branding because that's not the aim of the brand the aim is like this is this is a wellness brand it's a it's a natural wellness base like we started from from cbd but we do work with a lot of other natural compounds now as well um and it's really we'd like to describe ourselves as like the you know the asop of the wellness world or the, the byredo of the wellness world so a, a high quality products high quality branding done in a really sustainable and ethical way and um yeah something that people are happy to to have and to talk about yeah that sounds great that sounds mm. great and and uh, you know and um i mean obviously like you said in terms of uh you know product and and limitations of sort of innovation a little bit you know from the uh, fsa side of things um but but where, where do you see the next line of sort of product development uh coming from I think it's going to be increasingly like other compounds that work synergistically with with CBD. That's a really interesting space for us at the moment. Um, yeah, like I say, patches we found have, have been a great delivery mechanism. So now we're exploring well, what what other ways can we combine that in things that actually make sense to work with CBD in ways that are, are helping to target specific um, ailments for people or you know just specific specific use cases, specific specific needs. So it's it's really developing that. Um, yeah, into into those other um, sort of specific specific routes. That's that's very much our focus at the moment. Um, but like I say, with with everything, it, it has to be how is this 
fulfilling a specific need? Is it doing it in the best way possible for the end user? And until we have a firm yes on that, we don't roll out a new, a new product. Do, do, mm. you find, do you find when you're talking to inquisitive people, inquisitive potential customers, there's pushback against the whole cannabis sort of umbrella aspect to it where they're wary of the THC um, sort of history? How do you deal with sort of overcoming, educating, if you like, customers? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's definitely an education piece there, but actually in terms of... The, I've been surprised by how little of that negative okay. relationship is. I mean, obviously, it's quite self-selecting because the people that we tend to have conversations with have got an interest yeah. in it anyway. Yeah, um, comment, but, yeah. yeah um, actually, the, the worries about that, like, there are, like, as soon as we can you know, demonstrate to people that you know, it is THC-free, we have the, the lab tests to, to prove that. We have the accreditations to show that we, we take that very seriously. Um, that eliminates any, any worries that they, they may have, have had. Um, but they tend to be more from, you know, it's either people who are, either they're worried about it sort of impairing their function if there's, there's THC in there, uh, in there. Maybe they're a tested individual, you know, uh, maybe they're very sensitive to mm -hmm. THC. Um, those tend to be the main things. Or, yeah, they might be taking it with them traveling, for example. That's a, a common case as well we, we see a lot of that particularly through our retail store do need to be careful mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's been a few stories around around uh, the different rules and regulations from one country to the next and people yes have caught yeah. out there haven't they so pay attention to that um okay and uh, yeah so i, I think I mean, that's, that's good yeah no exactly i mean obviously it's, it's just a a quick sort of catch up but we certainly get a feel for what Cloris is all about, and, and I know you're online, but actually also you, you do have a, an actual physical store as well, don't you? Yes, we have a physical store um, and a treatment rooms um, underneath as well. So that's on 13 Newburg Street, which is um, in the Carnaby district, so um, central London, sort of prime, prime yeah. London. Oh, it'd be nice. We'll hope to get up and get yeah, up and yeah. have, a, have a look. <laughs> yeah, love, to, uh, yeah. love to have you there. Okay, yeah. well, many thanks for your time today, Matt, and we'll, we'll definitely catch up again with you soon. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Thank you. Cheerio.